They, they were good, huh? Good, good, good. These guys are always good. I'm a good boy. You are a good boy, Christian. I get real nervous, and so I drink water when I'm nervous. Yeah. So I was afraid the whole time that, that you could hear the water. <laughs> well, she's getting a show today, but she came in earlier, and we'll see the same lesson I did earlier. Just, you know, it's the same thing. Because I... She popped in with some, some parents, I guess. Hi. <laughs> So I have to do 10 minute introduction to a to a unit a 10 minute introduction to a unit on Huckleberry Finn. When Friday. For whom? Discovery King. Oh. It's off. Sure. Sure. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Are you recording already? Oh, okay. I gotta get the background stuff for black ones. Find your seats before the bell, please. If I get too loud, sorry, I'm loud. You're used to it, huh? Yeah. got two cases of them. Connor, 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 I have something for you, Connor. I have something for you. <laughs> Gonna be okay? Stop it. Is that you? It's Latoa, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Good boy! That's what I like to hear. Learn your seats before the bell, please. Except for Fabian, he gets an excuse. All right, gentlemen, your bell work is on the screen. Let's get to work, please. Two specific nouns that can be heard. Two specific verbs that can be seen. D'Antonio, you have five seconds to get to your seat. Two. Not you, Fabian. You're doing fine. Two specific adjectives that can describe a smell. Two specific adverbs that describe how something is felt or touched. And then two specific adjectives that describe a taste. Um, can I go get my folder? Yeah, I'll pick them up. You guys had testing yesterday, so. All right, you've got about three minutes, gentlemen. Just a second, fellas. Let it pass. Got about two minutes. Uh, would like jockey be one of the verbs? Sure. Let's see. For C? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Need a bell worksheet? There oh, you got one. What you need, senor. Mm -hmm. Did you forget to pick one up? Yes, sir. I got it. I get it. I got you.
Yep, just write the words down. You got it. most exciting adjective I've ever heard. See how specific you can get. Come on, come on. You can do better than dog and cat. I've seen your writing. Specific. Specific. What does specific mean? Something other than just a dog. Not just a dog, a German shepherd. <laughs> That's very specific. So, a noun that can be heard, Latoa. Um, What'd you write? I couldn't think of one of those, but. What did you think of? You know, if you don't have anything on there, I'm going to pick on you. Tristan, what do you got? Um, I've got one for smell. Smell. What do you got? Stinky. Stinky. All right. Now, here's the thing. If you were writing for SpongeBob, that would be awesome. Can you give me something more specific? I mean, can we go with odorous? Oh, yeah. All right, without, without talking, thank you. Putrid. Nice. All right. What? Horrific. A horrific smell. Good. Yes? For noun that can be heard. Yeah, noun that can be heard. Give me that. A truck. A truck. Could you get more specific? What kind of truck? No, more specific. That's less specific. I'm talking with him. A Honda truck? All right, you can definitely hear a fire truck. All right, Donovan. Um, I put a uh, trumpet. A trumpet. That's what I'm looking for. Excellent. Trumpet. Good. All right, Christian. Give me a verb that can be seen. A verb you can see. Yeah, what's a verb you can see? For example, if I use the verb flashing, that's something you can see. If I use the verb ringing... That's something you can hear. Okay. Tristan. Sprinting. Sprinting. All right, Azariel. Flying. Good. Chris. Give me something that can be touched or felt. Touched or felt. All right, but what did you write? Um, we'll just put the adverb. Okay. Curiously. Curiously. You can, now, curiously is not a something that is sensed. Curiously. Curiously. I-O-U-S, sorry. Curiously is not something that we touch, see, smell, taste, or anything. So though it's a great adverb, it is not one of the five senses. Okay? If we're looking for something that can be touched or felt, we're talking about what? Isn't it fat? Isn't it 
Oh, you're talking about an emotion. Like he felt the emotion of curious. I'm, I'm more talking about the five senses. Okay? Yeah. Gently. Gently. Now we're talking. Good, good, good. Now you're talking. That's how something is touched or felt. Yes. Prickly. Oh, man. Okay, L-Y. Good job, Elijah. Yes. Cautiously. Cautiously. Now that does create an image in my mind of moving slowly and carefully. Good. Cautiously. Good. Okay, what am I missing? What's the sense? Taste. Taste. Give me something to do with taste. Alan. Or oh, what do you have? Come on, I don't want to lock you out. For touch. Good. Carelessly. All right, nice. Okay, you're getting closer. Now you're talking. All right, Diego. How do you say it? Like old milk? Like, um, curdled? like curdled or clump, yeah. clumped? Curdled. Curdled. So you are D L E D, possibly? Yeah, curdled. That's good. That's exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, that's, that's where I'm headed this whole day because here's the issue. I've got all these great writers in the room, all you really good minds with lots of good language. But I noticed on our homework assignments when I was asking you, think of something you can see, think of something you can touch, you can smell on there and those lists. And the stuff I was getting was like dog, cat, car, things like that. When I'm looking for, you know, like, like ring or uh, uh, flash, I'm looking for curdled. I'm looking for things that, that bring a picture to your mind because that's what we learned about in descriptive writing. That's what I need you to do in narrative writing in order to create a setting. Okay? Do you understand where I'm headed with all this? Okay, I just need your brains on go. Aaron, you had one thing. Well, uh, for the taste. Yeah. Vile. Would you say vile? Vile. Vile. Oh, man. That's a good one. Which is, that's that taste you get in your mouth when you're about to throw up. It's a good, good word. Nicely done. Kind of that sour and burning. Good, good, good. Okay. Here's what we're doing today. So you guys had MAPS test yesterday. Today, on the other hand, what we're going to do is uh, I need to remind you what we are writing about. All of you wrote a uh, hero quest already as your pretest, but I didn't teach you anything about it. We didn't talk in depth about it. I just let you write. Got some pretty good stories. However, they were not classic hero quests. Some of you had stories about heroes, but I wouldn't say that they were classic hero quests. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to write a classic hero quest. Now, all the great stories are hero quests of one short, uh, stor uh, sort or another. Uh, in, in one way or another, hero quests are kind of in our culture, from Spider-Man to uh, the story we watched about Han Seo Lee the lady from North Korea. So they can be a real story, they can be a story about our superhero, they can be a science fiction story like Star Wars. Star Wars, each, each episode is written as a hero quest. The, the first three and the second three are both hero quests if you take them all together and the entire six movies are a hero quest. All of them together are a hero quest. And you probably didn't know it, but if you knew something about literature and you knew something about writing, you'd say, oh, he, you know, George Lucas is writing a hero quest every single time you watch one of these. And he even went back to Greek mythology and re read Greek mythology to see how you could write a hero quest. And it follows that story all the way along. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to start by me reading you a hero quest. And I just want you to listen at first, and then we're going to spend some time analyzing the hero quest. Fabian. The you knew what? Like the, chair. the chair, you bet. Sorry, man. Lift it up. There you go. Okay. So when we're listening, we are paying attention to me. You can keep your eyes on the paper or me, one or the other, but try not to distract anybody else in the room. You have a question? You sure can. All right. Hero quest. Alfric of Aylesworth. Oh, would that it be me. Alfric's heart cried out. He watched as three young men of the village set out to seek their fortunes and earn their place in the court of King Arthur. But alas, I am only a common stable boy, and not to my name but the clothes on my back, and ragged are they. Aylesworth was a dreary place at the best of times. 
Today, Alfred shivered in the cold and damp of the stable doorway. The early morning sunshine had yet to warm the air. Snorting and stamping, impatient horses waited in their stalls. The odours of the stable, warm and pungent, reminded him of chores yet to be done. As he turned to enter the stable, he pulled a stale, mouldy crust of bread from inside his tunic and hungrily stuffed it into his mouth. Alfred cringed as he saw Bram, red-faced and angry as usual, striding toward him. Here comes more trouble, thought Alfred. You lazy, unwhite, ungrateful wastrel, snarled Bram. You shall have nothing to eat until the stables are cleaned and the horses are fed and groomed. And gifting Alfred with a cuff on the side of his head, Bram stormed off to the manor house on his journeys. Alfred's travels took him northward to the mountains, and there he heard the story of the maiden Gwendolyn who had been kidnapped from her village and was being held for ransom by the squire of Newfeld. A group of young men had sworn to rescue her, though try as they might, none had been successful and none had returned. I must do what I must do, said Ulfric. No one in Newfeld knows of me, so I shall go that way and give such aid as I may. So. Ulfric travelled to Newfeld and was welcomed by the squire because of his fine new clothes and his beautiful black mare. Seeing the ring on a chain around Ulfric's neck, the squire, believing Ulfric to be a knight in disguise, invited the boy to sup with him. Much fine food was consumed by all. Ulfric was shown to a bedchamber with a fine feather bed. Soon, loud snoring was heard throughout the manor. Quietly, Ulfric stole from his room and, taking the key from the sleeping guard, opened the door to Gwendolen's prison. I pray thee, be not afraid, Ulfric whispered. I come only to release you and to allow you to return to your village. With that, he placed Gwendolen on his mare and spirited her out of Newfeld. At the edge of town, he set her on the road for home while he travelled on foot in the opposite direction. Many days later, dusty and footsore, Ulfric approached the gates of Camelot. Ahead of him and barring his way were two knaves full of boasting and bravado. Who oh, comes this way must come through us, they called. Kind sirs, said Ulfric, I ask that you let me pass. I have no quarrel with you. Ah, but we have a quarrel with you. And with that, they set upon the young man two on one. But Ulfric was quick, and he was strong of arm, and using his walking stick, he pummeled both of them to the ground. Winded but triumphant, Ulfric looked up only to see two knights approaching him with swords drawn. When next he had his wits about him, he was standing in front of the king. What name is yours? And... How came you by the ring you wear upon the chain around your neck? asked the king. As Ulfric stammered and studied his name, loud footsteps echoed through the hall. All eyes turned as Kay, Arthur's foster brother, came forward. Sire, this is the lad of whom I have spoken. It was his kindness that saved my life. I recognize him by the ring he wears around his neck, said Sir Kay. So, said the king, you are Alfric of Aylesworth. Your deeds have not gone unnoticed. To your knees. As Alfric knelt in front of his king, sure his life would soon be ended, he heard King Arthur's voice ring through the hall. To go to the aid of anyone in distress. To protect women and children. To fight honorably and to be pious and loyal to their king. These are the laws of chivalry all knights are sworn to uphold. Before you kneels a common man no more. Rise, Sir Alfric of Aylesworth. I welcome thee to the fellowship of the round table. And so, 
When Alfric returned to Aylesworth, it was not as a stable boy, but as one of King Arthur's trusted knights. All right. So, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right. So, there is a pattern to the way this story is written. All right. The hero quest begins with a common man or woman. Okay? So let's take the story of Star Wars. We'll kind of look at that as we go along. We'll look at the story of Hunyan Sail Lee that we watched the other day, and we'll look at Alfred of Aylesworth. And I think you'll see all three of these qualify as classical hero quests, except in one regard with uh, uh, the, the, the story of the Korean lane. All right, first of all, what's the title? Everybody. Alfred of Aylesworth. All right, so I want you to write that on the first line of the graphic organizer. Seems obvious. And then go ahead and write in the first sentence. Now is the beginning sentence a, a quote or a narration? narration. It's a quote. Make sure you look at it before you answer. It's a quote. So you can start your story with a piece of dialogue. So just, you can just write his quote in there and that can be the beginning of your your graphic organizer. So the title first and then the first sentence and you can just put oh would it would that it would be I can't remember. Oh <laughs> oh would that it would be me. Oh. All Frick's heart cried out. Perfect. Now, on the characters, whenever you get to that point, what I want you to write in there is any three characters that were important to the story. So we know Ulfric is one, right? So write that in the first circle. What's another character we can write in there? K. K. Okay, good. And he's important. We don't find out his name till later, but it's an important character. So Alfred in the first one, then K in the next one, King and Arthur. you could put King Arthur in the next one, or you could put a villain like the Squire of Newfelt or Bram. Or Bram. Good. Having a good villain for your hero quest is key. All right. So. Let's take a look now at Star Wars and see how just the first episode of Star Wars. So we start off with, who, who's, uh, raise your hand if you are familiar with Star Wars. Okay, raise your hand if you've never seen Star Wars. Just a couple of it. Okay, well, I, then I, I'll, exp, I'll explain the story as I go along. Luke Skywalker is on this little backwater planet. He's kind of living a normal life of a farmhand for his uncle. There's not a whole lot going on. And he obviously wants to do something more. There's this sense that he wants to go to the biggest city. He wants to do something else. They start off and they buy a couple of robots to help on the farm. And he just wants to do something bigger and better. Okay? So that's perfect. The hero quest begins with our hero who is a common person. Now, here's the key. That common person needs to have special qualities or characteristics that set him apart. Now, when we first meet Luke Skywalker and Alfred of Aylesworth, we don't know if they're like, they don't have any superhero abilities, right? But, but, but they have a personal quality that's a little bit different. What makes, for those of you who know the story, what made Luke Skywalker special? Yeah. He was a great pilot. Okay, he was a good pilot. Okay. Also, what about personality like character? Uh, he liked helping people. Okay, good. He was helpful. And we'll just say brave on here, okay? These characteristics, these qualities are super important. Now, he, then, if you don't know the story, what happens next is the, in the robot, there's a message from somebody, a princess who's been captured by the evil empire, right? And he immediately knows he's got to go do what? 
Savor. Very good. So the very next thing that happens, okay, so for, uh, let, let me move on here. Our setting is in Aylesworth, right? You put that there, but I also want you to take that same word and I want you to put it at the bottom of the mountain. So you have our, our mountain here, put it at the bottom where it says setting. Put Aylesworth in there too, okay? If you want, you can describe it a little bit, but don't worry about that. Put it down there at the bottom where it says setting. See that where that is, Spencer, down there at the bottom of the mountain? Now, one of the keys to a hero quest is that our hero has to go on a journey. And there has to be something that happens that pushes them out of their normal routine. So, for Luke Skywalker, what pushes him out of his normal routine is two things. He finds a message from a, a captured princess, and then he returns home to find what? His parents have been killed. His aunt and uncle, yeah. His aunt and uncle were murdered. So, he realizes that these robots were special, there was something significant going on here, and he's got to do something about it. So, our first setting, down here at the bottom, is we find Aylesworth. But then a problem happens for Ulfric. What's the problem? What happens to set him on his journey? Yeah. Um, he hears that a princess is captured, since no one knows him, he decides to go and help him. No, it's before that. What happens at in Aylesworth to kick him out? Ashton. Well, he's poorly treated. Poorly treated. He's sick of the beatings from this jerk who is his boss, and he's finished with that. He doesn't want to be beaten anymore. We need something to get us on our way. All right, now you tell me. Elijah, the story of Hanseo Lee. She starts off a normal, common, everyday girl in North Korea. What happened in North Korea that set her on a 14-year journey to reunite her family? She found out that her country was not the best in the world. Right. Like she sees her first public execution. She sees a child and a mother starving in the streets. And then she, is, she leaves North Korea because of what? A note from the famine. Good, Latoya. Excellent. Latoya, sorry. <laughs> Latoya got it on the. There has to be something that pushes our hero to do something different. In Hanseo Lee's case, it's the famine. In Aylesworth's, in, in Alfred's case, it's being poorly treated. Then something happens, something exciting, something interesting that challenges our hero and in a, in a sense kind of threatens them where they have to use their special character, their personality, the character or their ability to get through it. What's the first event that, that uh, Alfred runs into? Juan, what's the first event? Okay, good. Runs into the night. Now, here, this is really important. I'm going to write it really big. Item. In every good hero story, something is given to the hero in that first event. Something important that's going to kind of last through the whole story. Do you guys know Clash of the Titans? Yes. Yes. What is the first item Perseus is given? Shoes. The pin. Yeah, the, the sword. Pin. That's right. He, get, he does get the pin. You guys know the new one and I know the old one. But that's right. And he gets something. And in the ancient Greek, Greek myth, that's exactly what happens. He's given something by the gods who want him to succeed. And this item will become important to him as the story goes along. In every classic hero quest, something is given to our hero. What does Alfred get? Ring. The ring. Question, those of you who know Star Wars, what does Luke Skywalker get? Lightsaber. Yes, his father's lightsaber. Not just any lightsaber. The key is it's his father's lightsaber, right? And, and that item follows him all the way through all three of the second movies <laughs> until the very end of... Yeah, sometimes a, a companion can be very important. And by the way, that companion a lot of times will be lost. In a, in, a, in a real hero quest. Okay, let's go to the second event. Second event, what happens? Uh, somebody already said it. Yes? Okay, good. Gwendolyn. We'll just put Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. So he goes to a town and, um, and he releases Gwendolyn. Now, 
Saving K also, he got a reward for that, and that helped him in the second quest. This should be important in your story too. Something that happens in the first event, a lot of times will help the hero out in the second event. He finds a treasure, he gets something, he learns something. In his case, he gets a reward for saving K, and what does he get, Donovan? Two gold coins. Two gold coins, and that helps him to buy what, Donovan? Um, clothes, dinner, and a horse. Clothes, dinner, and a horse. And how does that help him on the next event? Um, he uses the clothes to look presentable and to be an undercover knight. Right. And then the horse makes him look... Cool. Because had he ridden up to the Squire of Neufeld looking like a stable boy, none of that next in the story would have happened. So he needed what he got in the first event to get through the second event. Classic hero quest. Classic hero quest. What's the third event? Oh. Yes, right. This, the, the knaves, right? Let me pull this up just a tad. So the knaves are in our third, our, our third event. Now, in this event, he uses his quickness and his strength of arm to beat them down, and then he is arrested. Now, one of the things I want you to notice here on this page is this term here, rising action. By rising action, here's what we mean. I read several of your stories. You had things going on, but one of the things that some of your stories lacked was a sense that things are getting worse. You need that in a good hero quest. First event, eh, it's not so bad. Second event, mm, it's getting a little more serious here. Life is on the line, but we get through it okay. Third event, barely make it. I mean, things could, should get very, very rough because it's all rising action, leading up to the top of our mountain. And at the mountain, we get to a point where all hope is what? Lost. Let's go back to Han Seo Li. Han Seo Li leaves and goes to China. Her first event is she is arrested, arrested and, ch and, and they uh, say that she is a North Korean. They challenge her, her Chinese. They question her and she says it's a miracle she got out of it. But that forced her to make a decision, right? Every major event should force our hero to make a decision. Her decision was to do what? Keep running other people. What? To keep running to go where? South Korea. South Korea. She leaves China because she's afraid she's going to be arrested at any minute. So after 10 years of living in China, she moves to South Korea. Second event. What was it? Edwin. <laughs> Hanseo leaves, she leaves China, she goes to South Korea, she's getting ready to go to college, and then? Uh, her family gets punished for... What, 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 what happened? Uh, they, the, they intercepted some money she sent to her family. That's right. So the North Korean officials intercept the money she's sending her family, and she finds out that they are going to be forcibly removed and possibly sent to a concentration camp. Every event forces a decision. Jusimiel, what's the decision that she has to make here? So she, what does she have to do then? John, what does she have to do? She finds out her family's getting ready to be put in prison or sent to a concentration camp. She goes back to China. She puts herself in risk again, but this time even worse. Notice the sense of rising action. And she didn't write this as a hero quest. It's just a real story. The next thing she has to do is a, she has to get through 2,000 miles of China on a bus with her family who don't speak Chinese, somehow get her to the Laotian border, to Laos, get them into Laos, get them to the South Korean embassy, and hopefully get back, all while running out of money because she's paying all these bribes to all these policemen. Yeah, and then they get arrested when they get to Laos. So it's this beautiful picture of the hero being forced to become something more. Who would have thought that little Aunt Seo Lee, living in North Korea when she's seven years old, would one day take a harrowing trip all the way across China to get her family into Laos, paying bribes to officials, dealing with policemen coming onto her bus, and she has to say that, no, no, these are deaf and dumb people, and they can't speak, and I'm their chaperone. Yeah, it really does present this picture of a true hero, growing and growing and growing as this story goes along. But the climax of Hanseo Lee's story, what happens? Again. What happens, Connor? Uh, they, uh, uh, when they get to Laos, uh, or, or about to cross, they uh, get all of a sudden they get uh, their parents, her parents get 
Yeah, they get arrested one time, but then they get arrested again in the Laotian capital, and she's out of money. And what does she act? What, are the, what words does she use? I, I lost all hope. She actually says those words in her story. It's the perfect climax to a hero quest. Okay? And then something's got to happen. When our hero feels like all is lost, and Alfred the. A dramatic change. So Alfred of Aylesworth, what happens to him? He gets, he gets money. What? Comes yeah, so K comes in down the hall. You hear his steps going through the hall. This is the one who saved me. And instead of having his head cut off for beating up two knaves and getting arrested, he instead, he's, he, yeah. Yeah, so in, in, for success or outcome, he becomes a knight. And as we finish up, I wanted to share with you something else about a typical hero quest that's sometimes in there and sometimes not, but I think it's one of the most important points, and that is loss. In the third event, in most hero quests, our hero is going to experience loss. It's part of what makes the story better. So, Let's take the story, the three arc, the three story arc of uh, Star Wars. Luke Skywalker is going through all these challenges. He gets to the Empire Strikes Back, right? And he has to face down his father. In that fight, he finds out two things. Well, he finds out one thing, and he, and then something horrible happens to him. What? The A finds that Darth Vader, his mortal enemy, is his father. Okay, loss. No, it can't be. It can't be that my father is the evilest, most evil per being in the galaxy. Good. He loses his hand. He gets it chopped off. This is typical hero quest. Typical hero quest. Our hero experience. What's that? Then he gets the robot arm, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. By the way, why is the robot arm significant in Star Wars? Why do you think that's important? Who's most like a robot? Um, Darth, Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. So not only does he find out that Darth Vader is his father, which is heartbreaking loss, like his heart breaks. Two, he loses his hand and has to replace it with a robotic hand, which makes him more like his father. So there's this moment in the third event in a story where our hero is going to become a little darker, going to be forced to do something that's a little uh, terrible. Sometimes in the third event, our hero loses the companion that they gained in the first event. So if they gained like a friend or something, maybe in the third event that, that friend dies. There has to be loss in the third event. Yeah. Um, I, I always kind of wondered this. If it was in the past... Okay, listen to Donovan, everybody. If, if Star Wars was in the past, how did they have lightsabers and that stuff? Like, they got stuff that we don't if, if I ask Brian, we're going to end up talking about Star Wars for about 10 minutes. But he knows, so ask him later. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you love it too. Come on. I know. Matheson does. Okay, back, back, back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's get back. Let's get back. What is the closing sentence of our story? Write it down. Write the closing sentence of Alfred of Aylesworth and put that on the lines down there. Uh, the, the climax is he becomes a knight. Okay. Oh, the climax for Alfred of Aylesworth yeah. is he meets King Arthur, right? Yeah. Arthur. Which I have terrible handwriting, sorry. I need my stylus, which I have somewhere. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. And the last line, give it to me, William. And so when Alfred returned to Ellsworth, it was not as a stable boy, but as one of the kings, King Arthur's trusted knights. In our last act, the final moment of our hero quest, our hero should be changed. Preferably for the better. Maybe a little tougher, maybe a little rougher, maybe a little sadder than before, but better. Okay? And that's the key. Now, if you look at Star Wars, every movie is a hero quest. 
But the entire series is really a hero quest about which character? It's Anakin. It's really a story of Darth Vader, isn't it? The story of Star Wars is about Anakin going from good to bad and back to good again. That's the real story of, of, uh, of Star Wars. In Hansei Lee's case, what, how was she changed, Simon? How was Hansei Lee? She starts off, she's just kind of worried about herself in the beginning, and then, uh, you know, she's just trying to survive a child who doesn't really know anything about the world. But in the end, how has she changed? Okay, specifically who? Who is she concerned about? The plight of who? Uh, the family, but beyond that. Korea. Yeah, Latoa. Korea. Korea. She says that she knows that she needs to be a voice for the North Koreans. That's change. Your hero should experience important change. For Alfred, he becomes a knight. Okay? His character doesn't change. He was always kind of a nice, chivalrous guy. But he's changed in the sense that he's no longer a stable boy. Right? Okay, that is a hero quest. Get out BLM 1E. Have that out in front of you. That's the homework for tonight.